<laughs> How's everybody doing? <laughs> well, today we are going to do compatibility of signs. We are going to do um, Aries and Leo. And that ends the series for Aries. Uh, we've done air, all the signs of the zodiac with Aries. So Leo will be our last. Okay? Leo will be our last, and then we're done with um the the Aries um compatibility or incompatibility of sign. It's totally completed. Now, a lot of you, uh, I've been doing birth charts. Uh, uh, as you know, many of you all uh, should know that I do consultations. You can call me for a consultation for readings. Many of you have requested for my phone number. I always have it published online. But sometimes I forget, you know, because my focus is not really to advertise. I let my management team take care of that. I just like to focus on the videos. But uh, my number is 347-485-6258 if you want a consultation. Or you can go into my website, thepeoplesastrologer.com, and my information and address, you know, I'm very public, or Google. Okay, the phone numbers are available, and I do consultations, yes. Now, putting that aside, in these consultations, when I do birth charts, for many uh, people, that, for many of you that call, that want a birth chart done, the client, but the question that keeps coming up that seems very important is that of the aspects of the planet, like the trine, the square, the sextile, the semi-square, the inconjunct, and the quintile, okay? And so I'm. what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do a special video where I'm going to talk about the aspects in astrology between the sun and the moon and all the other planets, and as well as mention the midpoints, which is something that I have not discussed because this is the realm of deep professional astrology and it involves mathematics. And not many people really enjoy or are intimidated by mathematics. So I don't discuss the midpoints. That's really more for professional astrology. No, that's my division. You know, nothing to do with the general public. The, but when I do professional birth charts, I do go into the midpoints and discuss them. And they, trust me, they're extremely telling and extremely important. You know, the best kept secret in astrology, the midpoints. Anyway, um, that's open and I'll do a video on that, on the aspects. I'll do that at some point, maybe in late summer or early fall, okay? Uh, depending on the demand. But today we are going to talk about compatibility of signs. I cannot talk enough about Leo. <laughs> I know, I know. You all know that I'm a little bit of a narcissist. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. You know. But this is the last of the series with Leo and Aries. So we're done with Aries and the compatibility and incompatibility of signs. Okay, yay! And Leo is the last of the signs of the fire or earth or the elements to discuss compatibility or incompatibility with Aries. With Aries. So, um, first, let us discuss the correlation that we see this combination in nature. So again, we see the sun, which illuminates the solar system, our solar system, our own existing, uh, our own reason for living is that Leo sun there that illuminates our solar system. Trust me, there are many suns of other solar systems and of other star systems, billions and trillions. But we live in this solar system, in this particular solar system, not any other solar system. 
So our pride and joy is that sun that illuminates our solar system. Leo. Okay. The beauty of the star of the heavens. But then you got Aries. Oh, baby. Aries is no match for Leo. And Leo is no match to Aries. Aries is the emperor. Leo is the king. So, the sun illuminates our solar system. But the sun is not the only burning star in our solar system. All the other bright stars of space are representative of other suns, of other solar systems, all clustered together. So when you look at the night sky, you see a canvas, a mosaic of billions and billions and perhaps trillions of stars. And it makes the Leo sun of our particular solar system kind of meager and bleak <coughs> in comparison. But that's only in reference to the grand scheme of things. In the immediate reality in which we exist, the sun is the most glorious burning ball of fire in our lifetime. When we see that sun rising at dawn, or when it goes down at dusk, it's a beautiful scene. Beautiful. It's breathtaking. With all the stars of the night sky, which represent Aries, there is no personal or intimate connection that we have with that, like we have with our sun, which is so much closer to us. And we see its glory and its beauty and its magnificence. Let me tell you. And it's not so much because I have a lot of Leo in me. But when that sun rises in the morning, and I could be depressed. When I see that sun and I feel the warmth of that heat of the sun, I just get all happy and bubbly, you know? When it's rainy and cloudy, I can get very depressed and feel very sad. You know, the sun affects us. Its absence as well as its presence. So, you would say in nature, what would be more important? The Aries or the sun? In, in my, um, in my uh, opinion, the sun. Because without that fucking sun, we will not be here. We will not exist. Yes, the night sky, which is pregnant with all kinds of stars and lights, is beautiful. And that is Aries. But Aries is too deep. It's too fiery and too dangerous for us to truly appreciate its beauty. Remember, in Roman and in Greek mythology, the only temple that was not rosen or, or, or erected was that of Ares. I mentioned in my other videos that when the worshippers went and worshipped the god of Ares, God, the god of Ares comes down with a ball of fire and he burns all of his devotees and all of his worshippers because he's the element of fire. You can't contain fire. It is the big bang. It is just like, you know, oh, I, <laughs> I love Aries, and I have an Aries moon, you know. So I understand the power and glory of, of Aries, you know. It is the first light. It is the first swirling that the Kabbalah talks about in the Hebrew uh, tradition. The Ein Sof, the Ein Sof Ur, as the Kabbalists uh, refer to it. That's Aries. It's too terrifying for us to be able to do anything or benefit or read from it. It is the canvas of the interstellar backdrop of space. 
So then all the lights are the same and he blinds and he and becomes the same. But Leo, Leo is a specific star that is specific to our solar system and to our existence. <laughs> I can't talk about Leo and I'd be a little dramatic. <laughs> How do we express this? How do we express this in the human ego and personality? And later, the psychological behavior that goes with this combination. We have a lot to cover here. So we're going to jump right in. And we're going to discuss the compatibility of signs of Leo and Aries. <laughs> First of all, one comes from the other. Leo comes from Aries. So Aries, you can say, is the parent, the progenitor that gives birth to the son, which now is Leo, which we thoroughly enjoy to this present day until the hydrogen runs out and we no longer can appreciate the beauty of that star. This has happened before with the planet Saturn. People don't know this, but the planet Saturn used to be a star. It used to be a star. And its fuel burned out. And it became the planet Saturn. So research the mythology of Saturn. It used to be a burning star. Like our sun is today. Yeah, I know. It's deep. It's deep. Okay, so understand, however, that before, before we can jump in and discuss the, the relationship dynamic between a couple, man or woman, you know, below 30 or after 30 with this combination, I, 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 I got to define a couple of things concerning Leo, okay? Five foolproof ways to love a Leo. If you're lucky enough to, to want to be in love, you know, with a Leo, okay, you will almost certainly will want to hold this beautiful relationship and ensure its future and its compatibility. You don't want to fuck up a relationship with a Leo. Yeah, you're going to have to find a way to deal with the narcissism that is so inherent in Leo. You have to find a way to deal with it. But one thing is certain, that if you... If your eyes falls on a Leo, if your heart falls for a Leo man or a Leo woman, understand that they have to become a priority in your life. You cannot have a relationship, even if it's a friendship with a Leo, and not give him his due, not give him his praise, not give him his attention and your exclusivity to the lion. This is psychologically necessary for the psychology and ego structure of the personality of Leo to feel content and happy and in balance with you. If the Leo man or woman doesn't feel that this is happening, then they are going to feel insulted and offended and somehow um, disgraced. And their love and affection for you can quickly turn on you. This is something that is kind of typical of the fire signs. So what do you do? Well, you have to pause, pay attention, and be an observational psychologist. And understand what the specific emotional needs are of your Leo man or your Leo woman. And one, because they're not going to discuss it openly. They might not even know themselves. 
So at this point, you're going to have to figure out a way to go like this. Um, okay. And really observe, really analyze, you know, what's going on psychologically. And then quickly move to rectify the situation. Because the Leo man and the Leo woman, let me tell you, um, you really have to be almost a natural psychologist to try to understand them in a level that they probably may not understand themselves. So when the Leo man or the Leo woman seeks that kind of um, connection with you, understand that they may see within you a potential for their own rescue. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it has to be something that you're going to have to become devoted to if this person truly is important to you. And we had to start out this video in, the, in this context because the Leo personality in the uh, horoscope is probably the most unbalanced of all the signs of the zodiac. It is the ego, and it is the narcissistic ego. So the Leo is not even halfway. He's still below a certain level of gestation and human development. Now remember, he represents the adolescent, the teenager, psychologically. So to be with a Leo man is almost being with a teenager, psychologically here. Okay? And, and it's not that there's anything specifically wrong with that. It's actually quite charming and enduring and attractive. But when we deal with life's vicissitudes, do you know what the word vicissitudes means? When you're dealing with the mundane stuff of life, washing the dishes, mopping the floor, on Saturday you clean, you do laundry, on Sunday you go to church, you don't be wilding out. You know, you do that Friday night, you know, and then you get ready Sunday night to go to work and then the kids to go to school. The natural mundane stuff of life, which some of us can do without, which can be quite boring, is not necessarily something that the Leo man or the Aquarian man, the opposite polarity, both the man and the woman, care to kind of deal with. They don't want to deal with that. They want life to be beautiful, and all they want is to love and to be loved. Nothing wrong there. Nothing wrong with that. So then, the question becomes, how do you strike a balance? Because the Leo man and the Leo woman can be extremely selfish and not mean to be. Now, this can be a contradiction because I say that Leo is extremely generous. Yes, he is. But in that generosity, he can also be possessive, clingy, and apt to treat those that he loves as possessions that he owns. And that is true of Taurus, Aquarius, and Scorpio. The fixed signs of the zodiac. How do you overcome this hurdle? And I got to begin with Leo because Cardinal Aries, if he is held too tight by his Leo woman, she will be burned by his rejection. If it's a Leo man with an Aries woman, she'll put up with his shit for a while. Because the Leo man can be so fixed in his ways and apt to control stuff and situations. You know, as the king, he's in charge. So therefore, there's a psychological need to control. Like Scorpio. So, is the Aries man or woman going to tolerate that? Are they going to take that? No, take it up the butt without no Vaseline. No, it's too cardinal. It will not do that. It'll be like, fuck you, Leo, and go and find somebody else. And there'll be a line of people waiting for Aries, the man or the woman. 
And the little man or woman will stay in his throne the way he is or the way she is until someone comes and fancies them and they because it's a fixed sign. It won't change. And they do the same thing after person over and over again. If they're young, it's disastrous. It'll be like that for a while, decades. When they go past 30, hopefully, but really, the, the maturity of the little man and woman gets better past their 50s. It is the sign of the baby, the divine child. So they technically never really truly grow up. But then at the same time, do you want them to? Do you want them to grow up? They're so loving and charming and delicious, you know? And they award us such joy whenever we are in their presence and in their company. So, what kind of compromise can be reached with this combination? And who's the boss? Who's the boss? Is it Leo? Or is it Aries? Well, let's flip it. If we're dealing with a Leo woman and an Aries man, the Aries man will be in charge. Because he's not swayed by no pussy. I hate to break it down and be raw like that. But he's not. He won't. If it was a Leo man and an Aries woman, like I mentioned, she, if he's doing right, she'll toe the line. But when he don't, she'll like, fuck you and, and leave. It's too cardinal. The Aries energy cannot be contained and the Leo energy cannot be swayed. Now what? It can be a stalemate or a Mexican standoff. They're both fire, and when you put two fires together, you got more fire. It exacerbates, it escalates things. So that means that one of the two will have to be the better part of valor and tone down and step down. Who will it be? Leo or Aries? It would be. Uh, I got synonym. No. I put synonym in my head. You see? Synonym is uh, good luck. You know me. I'm an astrologer. I'm a little eccentric. I got to do it. For my own shoe. <laughs> okay. Understand that in this case, the boss here will be Aries. Because Aries will not tolerate shit. Aries will leave if they ain't getting what they need or what they want. The little man would not leave, but he would step out and cheat. And, and bring a certain level of cruelty to the relationship if he doesn't get or if she doesn't get what they want before they throw you out into the curb. So understand that with this combination, there has to be a level of commonality that brings them together. Now, I understand that I've been speaking thus far of kind of the clashes and seemingly incompatibility. But this is a compatibility of sign. So Aries and Leo are compatible. The relationship can work, a cardinal and a fix. The fix won't change, but the cardinal can fix and adapt around the fixity of the Leo. And that can make the relationship be sustainable and work. Okay? But otherwise, you know, there has to be a level of trust, a level of familiarity, and a level of, um, what can I say? A le mutual respect. If anything, with this combination, 
there has to be mutual respect for each other in order for this combination to work. And we're done with part one.